I must say that not that many people, you know, uh, formerly, uh, I would say that um, not that many people knew about Chile. Uh, they would think of Chile as being just a country in Latin America. And uh, not too many people could see the differences. But more recently, because of the um, development of Asia-Pacific economic cooperation, uh, we have seen Chile projecting itself uh, very prominently as a leader in terms of trade and investment liberalization. So in that sense, uh, we think that uh, Chile uh, has become a, an important player in Latin America on trade and investment liberalization. That's one. The second was that uh, people in Thailand knew of Chile of being a country under military dictatorship for a long time. And that is very similar to Thailand. We were under military uh, dictatorship or military dominance for a long time too. From the time that we uh, adopted um, constitutional uh, democracy and that was 1932. Always we have had military involvement. So we often talked about, hey, in Latin America, there were many countries like that. Uh, and Chile uh, mentioned as one of them. But then um, uh, Chile was able to get out of that uh, mode of politics, of having the military uh, no longer dominating the process of democracy in Chile. So that is an, uh, a development that we are very much uh, interested in and would like to learn more about <laughs> how, how how Chile has been able to minimize the role of the military in politics. Depends on sectors. We do not know, you see, when, when the question is about sector. Uh, if uh, the sector is uh, minerals and mineral processing, I think we, we can be a part of the latter, of the part of the mineral processing. If the sector is food processing, yes, we can be a major uh, partner uh, in that process. We have uh, among Southeast Asian countries, perhaps the most advanced food processing industry. And it's a big, big uh, economic sector. Uh, both in terms of domestic production and in terms of export is a very advanced, very advanced. So in that sector, yes, uh, Thailand, Chile uh, can definitely benefit from co cooperation and collaboration. Well, why I say very good, uh, I, I have really no explanation. Uh, I think that um, uh, Chile has shown interest in Thailand, and there has been visit by leaders, uh, high-level leadership from Chile. And Chile has uh, initiated this uh, FTA with Thailand, which is quite an honor for us, that uh, for a country like Thailand, Chile thinks that uh, it's good enough to have FTA with. You know, uh, this is important because, the, for example, when U.S. wanted to have FTA with us, uh, it, it did not work out because there are so many things that, that we do which are unacceptable to the American. But the fact that we have FTA with Chile, it means that a lot of things we do are acceptable to the Chilean. So in that sense, um, I think that the relationship is very cordial. Uh, one thing in the last decade, that uh, we have realized uh, is that uh, if we adopt this market capitalism, uh, we cannot expect that market capitalism will be good for everyone. So market capitalism has to be supplemented uh, with uh, other social uh, policies, social safety net, 
uh, welfare system. So recently, Thailand has um, adopted uh, some social uh, policies which I think are of interest. Maybe to Chile, I don't know, or maybe you have even better uh, so-called uh, social um, policy than Thailand. Uh, we have universal health care. Uh, I do not know whether Chile has already adopted that universal health care. If not, yes, it's a very good uh, example. Uh, we are adopting, we have adopted the universal uh, education for the people. Of course, we are not implementing it as well. But it is the intention that uh, we have this so-called universal education. I, again, I do not know whether in Chile you have universal education, that uh, education is free you know, for everybody um, until the end of the schooling, you know, before going to college. And even going into college, they have this uh, credit or loan system to help. A student, I think you have that too in Chile. So these are some of the policies that uh, I think among all the emerging economies, uh, the public policy that we could learn from each other. And another thing that we could also learn in a bad way is the public policy which is known as uh, populism. The one that uh, had the objective of being popular without regard for economic cost to the society. And that you could also learn from us that you should not do. We have some of this bad populism policy, which is so costly. Uh, the whole intention was really to, to get uh, politicians elected uh, with no regard for economic cost. And I think these things uh, happened in Latin America before. Uh, we read about it in Argentina during the Juan Peron time. So uh, I think it's pretty well known as some of the policies which are not good. And we should learn not to do it. <laughs>